love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I'll praise you. I lift you up.
Put your hands Hallelujah. together. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. 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 That is why my heart is filled with praise. Do you love him today? Do you love the Lord today? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God. Hallelujah. For you joining us here today at the Community Refuge Church of Christ here in Manalapan, New Jersey. Amen. Where our apostle Fred Rubin is our pastor, First Lady Teresa Rubin, and our assistant pastor, Elder Barry Williams. We bring you greetings. Hallelujah. We bring you greetings today with a heart filled with praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank God for what he is doing. We thank God for who he is, for he is the great I am. He is the awesome God. He is a wonder. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God for being back into the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. We thank and praise God for those who were praying for us. Amen. As we laid our father to rest um, last week. Amen. I tell you, I don't understand why folk want to move down to Florida. <laughs> I don't get it. The heat index, the heat index every day was uh, over 110. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, I tell you the truth. But I think of praise God, amen, for him blessing us. Although, you know, I, I, God is good. We had to wait 12 hours in the airport because they said it was a mechanical problem on a plane. They tried to fix it, couldn't fix it, but I'm so glad they got us another plane. <laughs> Instead of trying to be, you know, trying to put you know, a patch work on or put some duct tape on it and think it's all ready to go, but I think I praise God. <laughs> for him doing the right thing, amen, and blessing us and bringing us home safe in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But we think and praise God. Hallelujah. Come on in. Hallelujah. Join the festivities today in the name of the Lord. We think and praise God for all things. So we're going to get started, amen. We're going to ask our elder Nicholson. He's going to come and lead us in prayer, amen. And we're going to ask everyone to stand at this time, amen. And you know, as I say, whatever you want the Lord to do, put it on your mind right now. Whatever you desire from the Lord, hallelujah, you know, and believe that he's able to do it, he will do it in Jesus' name. So let's receive our Elder Nicholson at this time as he blesses us with prayer in Jesus' name. Shall we look to him this morning? Amen. We, we count it an honor and a privilege it is to be in the land of the living. We just thank God for, for his goodness and his kindness and his tender mercy. We thank God this morning just for the necessity thing that we have. For we didn't take it granted, but Lord, you, it could have been us. As the song saying, outdoors, having no place to live, amen. No food, but Lord, you've been so good to us. So good, so good. And God, we come to give you thanks and praise this morning for your goodness and your kindness. How you watched over us, oh God, all week long, oh God. God, we didn't, it was nothing good that we deserve, oh God, but Lord, you look all all of our faults, Lord. You look beyond that and you saw the need, God. Lord, we pray this morning to meet every need of your children this morning. You know what they stand in need of, oh God. 
And I pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, God, to meet it, oh God. We pray this morning to just rebuke the powers of darkness this morning. Everything that rises up against us, oh God, you de declare it shall be defeated, oh God. And we claim victory in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, we praise you this morning for your blessing in our life, oh God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, oh God, that yet abide with us, oh God. Oh God, I praise you this morning. Get to glory this morning, oh God. Empty us out, oh God. Empty us out, oh God. And let the Holy Ghost, oh God, have his free core this morning, oh God. And I pray this morning, oh God, to touch this morning and to heal, oh God. Deliver, oh God, and set free, oh God. God, cause you declare, Lord God, everything, oh God, is moving, oh God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, oh God. Have your way this morning, oh God. Move, oh God. Move, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, oh God. And God, I praise you for it. I praise you for what you're going to do this day, oh God. Every miracle you're going to work this day, oh God. We give you glory in advance what you're going to do, oh God. Oh God, everyone that's under the sound of my voice this morning. God, I praise you, oh God. To, oh God, to that one, oh God, who's outside of the ark of safety, Lord. Somebody this morning, oh God, need a miracle, Lord Jesus. And Lord, use a miracle working God this morning. Use the one that, that can heal this morning. You the one that able to set free, oh God. God, I praise you for it, oh God. Cause you can, oh God, and you will, oh God. I thank you for healing, oh God. For healing us as cancer, oh God. God, that was wrapped in our body, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, when we come down from this mountain, but never from your presence, oh, God, we ask you to keep us, oh, God. Keep us in our right frame of mind, oh, God. In the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I praise you and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Oh, yes. God, the praise right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Our sister Geis is coming at this time. Amen. We're going to ask you to remain standing as she comes and reads our scripture reading this morning. Romans, the fifth chapter, starting at the first to the ninth verse. In Jesus' name. We're reading Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his, this grace within we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh, worketh patience. And patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, per adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love towards us in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. In Jesus. 
Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. The song said, this is the day that the Lord have made. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord have made. I come out to rejoice, for he has made me glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know about y'all, but I'm happy to be here this morning. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo. Yes. Yes, Lord. Okay. I'm going to do announcements very quick. <laughs> and we can continue praising his name. Amen. Amen. All right. Tuesday, this Tuesday, we will continue as we do each Tuesday, the Our Fellowship at 7 p.m. Our Fellowship, 7 p.m. Uh, this, this Tuesday, our instructor is Elder Jenkins. Elder Jenkins will be instructing us this Tuesday evening. Not sure the topic yet, but uh, tune in, tune in for education, sorry, Our Fellowship at 7 p.m. I've been tuning too much praise. <laughs> All right. I gotta take a deep breath. <laughs> All right. So Tuesday evening, Tuesday evening, our fellowship. Elder Jenkins will be our instructor this Tuesday. So please join us on Zoom and Facebook for the hour of fellowship. Next Sunday we will continue um, our usual schedule. There still will no be will not be an education hour at 10.30. We will not resume education hour until after Labor Day. Um, so we will still, though, have corporate prayer, 10.30 instead, here in the sanctuary. So join us if you can. Um, and then we'll continue with our morning worship at 11.30 on Zoom and Facebook Live. All right. Save the date, save the date, save the date. September, September 24th is Sunday, September 24th. We will be traveling as a church to the Faith Ministries Church in Lakewood, New Jersey for the afternoon service, the afternoon service. So we'll be delivering the afternoon service at 3 p. Oh, it's at 3.30 now, so apologies, it was 3.30. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our praise and worship team will be ministering and Bishop Rubin will be delivering the message. Those that will be traveling with us as a group, there will be lunch served here after service, immediately after service. We'll meet as a group, have some food, and then we will travel to the Faith Ministries Church in Lakewood, New Jersey to the afternoon service. Again, that's September 24th. That's Sunday, September 24th. Amen? Amen. Okay. One last one, which I've shared each Sunday for announcements. The year, this is the year of prayer. The bishop has charged us as the year of prayer, amen? And as such, we have designated the board in the, in the vestibule as our corporate prayer board, a corporate prayer board. So those may have already posted a prayer. If you would like to add prayers to that board, we do have prayer cards at the welcome desk. Please feel free to complete one, and our team will be sure to post those prayer cards on the board. And for all of us, as we pass the board, please take note of the prayers so that we also can add those prayers to our list as we pray one for another. Amen? Amen, amen. And while we talk about prayer, we are a church that believes in... Now, that didn't sound very powerful... <laughs> We're a church that believes in the wonder-working, miracle-working power of prayer. Amen? Amen. There are many of us sitting here today that are miracles. Amen? Amen. And so we know prayer works. Yes? Okay. Amen, amen, amen. And so as we continue to pray one for another, we have a list of those on our prayer list that are in need of special prayer for health, for bereavement, um, and some just generally. So we want to continue to lift those up on our prayer list for special, special healing, comforting um, for those in bereavement. And again, let's continue to pray one for another. Amen? Amen. All right. I believe that is it. Elder Tucker, come for tithes and offering. Amen? Amen. It's all as 
Hallelujah. The praise team prepares their cell. Amen. We're going to ask everyone to stand. And those that are in person will give their offering in a few minutes. But you also have four ways to give by mail, by online, and by cash app, which is actually on the um, screen right now in the name of the Lord. So those that are in the sanctuary, we're going to ask everyone to stand with the offering in your hand in the name of Jesus. If you... If you need an envelope, we are actually uh, raise your hand and somebody will service you in Jesus' name. Elder, starting from the rear, facing the wall, starting from the rear.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. It could have been me that was outdoors. It could have been me without food. It could have been me without clothing. It could have been me without shelter. But thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me out. Thank you, Lord, for healing my body. Thank you, Lord, for watching over me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you for what you have done for me. Do I have a witness in here today? Do I have a witness in here today that has a grateful heart today? Do I have a witness here today that can stand on your feet and give God praise about what he has already done for what he's about to do? Do I have a witness in here? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to God. Took me over the dangerous airways. Thank you. Took me over the dangerous highway. Thank you. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No matter what I'm going through, I can still find it in my spirit to say thank you, Lord, for all that you were. If you don't have anything else to do yet, thank him for you woke up this morning. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, the activities of your limbs. Thank you, Lord. Still got the blood running warm in your vein. Thank you, Lord. But most of all, he saved your soul. Can you say thank you, Lord? Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and give God the glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Not because I asked you to, but because you know God is good. Not because I'm instructing you to, but because you thought about what he did last night. Hallelujah. When you thought about what he did yesterday, you thought about what he did last week. Hallelujah. Because of that, my heart shall say thank you. And I give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. Hallelujah. For all that God is doing. In the name of the Lord. Is that all right? Amen. I'm ready for the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. I think the atmosphere has been set for the word of God. I believe we have invited his presence in here today. And I believe he can say, hallelujah. He can smiling, amen, at us in the name of the Lord. I believe that. Amen. So we're going to go further. Amen. And you know, we want to give him as much. I'll speak as much time as he needs so the Lord can use him. Hallelujah. So the Lord can bless him to bless us. Is that all right? Amen. So we're going to at this time receive our assistant pastor, Elder Barry Williams, as he comes to break the bread of life with us this morning. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. And he's going to come in his own way. In the name of Jesus, if he wants to sing a song or have somebody sing a song, it's up to him. But he's going to come his own way in Jesus' name. Is that all right? Let's receive him. Elder Barry Wills with a hearty amen in Jesus' name.
words just drop. I'm going to ask y'all to help me. Just one line. this morning because that that's what the Lord gave me <laughs> that's one of my list worship songs hallelujah and I thank God for his goodness and I thank God for his grace for his mercy towards us and even before I read the scripture I want, to be, I want to talk about protocol for a miracle. Protocol for a miracle. And the best place to start your protocol for a miracle is to tell him thank you for the last thing that he did. If you ever really look for God to do something, you have to kind of think of it. Think about it logically first. Think about it logically. If you ask a person to do something for you and they did it and you appreciate what they did, it makes it easy to go back to them and ask for another blessing. But if you messed up and you didn't pay right, you didn't return right, it's going to be more difficult. 
So you want to keep the atmosphere uh, one of thanksgiving so that when you need something else from the Lord, you say, well, look, I, I, I thank you for that, and I'm still thanking you because I know you're going to work in my favor. All right, we're going to look familiar passage of Scripture. I have a couple um, different ones. And I think I want to start with Mark. Do you got anything up there? What? Five and thirty. I'm sorry, 5 and 22. What did I say I was going to talk about? All right, all right, all right. Uh, I didn't forget. I was just saying whether you remember. All right, all right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Protocols for me. Anybody need a miracle? Hallelujah. I thought about this particular passage because it joins the passage that Bishop talked about last week. This, in light of the scripture, was the focus. Mark 22 with Jarius and his daughter was the focus. If I would uh, use a subtopic or another topic, I would say don't be distracted. Don't be distracted by what happened before. Mm-hmm. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. I want you to note that he fell at his feet. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now, this is Jairus' request. He's looking for something not anonymous, oblivious, but he's looking for a particular thing. And he says, I want you to come lay hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. We're going to skip down through the 35th verse. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any? As soon as Jesus heard the words that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And let me just skip right down to the 39th verse. I don't know if I have that on there, but down to the 39th. And when he was come in, he said unto them, 
Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that was with him, and entered where the damsel was lying took her by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word and sanctify it in our hearts in Jesus' name. Protocol for a miracle. I wanted you to Take note that when Jairus came to Jesus, it said he fell at his feet. Another account says that he worshipped him. In many passages you will see in the New Testament when those that came to look for a miracle from Jesus the Bible would say that they, and they worshipped him. And this one says, and he worshipped him, saying, saying. Well, what was the worship? He worshipped him, saying, my daughter is at the point of death. He's worshipped. He's, and I need you to come. And I need you to touch her, lay your hands on her so that she can be healed and she shall live. So the first thing in your protocol for a miracle is what? Worship. When you come before him, you must fall at his feet. And when you fall at his feet, you acknowledging that I am at your mercy. Hallelujah. What I need uh, no doctor can fix it. Nobody can help me with this but you. Hallelujah. And so he first of all acknowledged that you can do what I'm asking you to do. And I believe that as children of God, we have to learn how to make up in our mind that when we come, it's not just for the need, but it's because we believe that he's able to do what he says. I'm falling down because you can do this. You have the power. You have the authority to fix what I need. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to worship you. Hallelujah. I'm going to say great things about you, who you are. I'm going to recall the things that you have done. I'm going to go into my thanksgiving and my praise because now I need you to work again on my behalf. Somebody put your hands together and just begin to worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, first thing is we got to worship him. And when we fall down to worship him, immediately following his worship was what he desired. So the second thing in the protocol is this is where you ask. Hallelujah. You ask God for what you need him to do. You don't pray amiss. You pray directly concerning what it is that you need from God. God. And I have learned that when I was younger and when I was uh, uh, just a babe in Christ, that, that I didn't have enough faith to come directly to God. I knew he would be there to help me, but my faith wasn't on target enough so that when I began to pray, I prayed broad. Just in case, 
Hallelujah. Y'all, nobody but me, huh? You, you, you know, you didn't ask him directly. You went around it, Lord. Now, you know I need some help over here. What? Lord, you know I need a, I need a touch over here. Uh, you, you went around because just in case, hallelujah, you didn't have enough faith or he didn't do it, you wasn't so specific. You wouldn't feel so bad because I didn't ask for that and he didn't give it to me. I just said I needed some help. I just said I needed a touch. Hallelujah. And sometimes it's even okay that we start out with that kind of faith. But it's got to build to a place where you know what you need and you ask God for what you need. So now when I come to God, hallelujah, it's not just a blessing. It's not just another touch. Hallelujah. It's not just now, now in, I, I ain't bashing nobody, but, but there is a place for any way you bless me. Hallelujah. That, that, that's a baby stage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever fall, God, however you do it, bless me. But when I come to know who I am to him, my God. Hallelujah. I begin to learn that who I am, not from what I'm looking at me as, but who, how he sees me as a son. Hallelujah. And I, as a son, when I went to my father to ask for something, I knew what I wanted. I knew what to tell mama, I, I want this. Hallelujah. When I begin to understand I'm a son, ain't no any way you bless me. Because I ain't going to be satisfied. Hallelujah. I ain't going to be satisfied until I get what I want, what I need, and what I'm asking God for. Hallelujah. So we got to learn how to ask. Hallelujah. Come boldly to the throne of grace and ask him for what you want, for what you need him to do, for how you need him to bless you. Ask him. So the second thing is to ask and invite him into your situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that something? We got to invite him. Almost like an oxymoron. We got to invite God into our situation as if he don't know what's going on he don't he don't he don't see you over there you you got to invite yeah, you got to invite him in because he's waiting on the invitation so i can do it i can do it but ain't nobody ask me nothing i can fix it i can work it out but nobody opened their mouth Hallelujah. So we got to learn how to open our mouth and speak unto God. And, and some things we like to say in our spirit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it come out of our mouth. So we said it, we pray in our spirit. Shot. Y'all, am I talking to anybody? You even scared to hear it. Shot. Hallelujah. But God is working on you so that stuff can come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why he put it in your spirit. Hallelujah. Because in your spirit, hallelujah, is where things start at. If you don't believe me, go down to the house, go down to the job when somebody get on your nerve. Where, where it first start at? Don't start out your mouth. It start in you, something in you, in your head start talking. And all of a sudden you done said something and you done, done open your mouth and let them know you done gave them a piece of your mind. So, so it's what, the, the Bible says it ain't what goes in a man that, that 
corrupts him is what comes out. Hallelujah. So if what comes out is going to corrupt you, then what comes out is going to bless you. Y'all hear what I'm saying this morning? What comes out of your mouth is going to lift you and encourage you if you just say it. Oh, God. How many days have I struggled with saying it? Ah, yeah, sure. Hallelujah. I struggle saying it. I, I, I don't want to hear me say it. It's too bad. It's too difficult. Hallelujah. And so we have to learn how to speak. Hallelujah. In the presence of God. Because there is a difference when you're talking by yourself and when you're talking in the presence of God. Hallelujah. There is a difference. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Hallelujah. Now, the next protocol happens when, when you got a situation going on and you're now able to speak this thing out. And in your mind, you're asking God to do it because the situation is as thus. You know what it is. You know what it is? Jairus came because his daughter was at the point of death. And if he lays her hands on her, she shall be healed and live. Now, we have to deal with, in the protocol, what happens, how do we handle when it escalates beyond what you've asked for? Gonna make me run up in here. See, the situation was she was sick and she was at the point of death, but she wasn't dead. And so, my prayer was to come lay your hands on her so that she would be healed. That means, in order to be healed, she has to be what? Sick but alive. And if she's healed, then she shall live. But what happens when it turns for the worse? Have you ever been in a situation and you've been praying for God to help? And before God even moved, everything turns for the worse and not the better. Hallelujah. Now you got something that was worse than what it was when you started. And I had faith to go to God because I knew what it was when it started. But now I'm shook up because what I prayed for, hallelujah, is now beyond what I have faith for. Shut up. Hallelujah. And so now what happens? Hallelujah. When it escalates beyond. Hallelujah. What you got to do? You got to keep on believing. You got to keep on seeking God. And the Bible puts it like this, is that while he was talking, hallelujah, somebody else came from the house. Hallelujah. Somebody else came from the house and said, look, Jairus, I know you came because your daughter was sick, but now it's gone beyond that. She's dead. So come on back home. Leave, leave the master alone because now it's beyond. H had he got here, hallelujah, while she was still alive, we, we believe he was able to help her. But now it's gone past that. She's dead. So don't trouble him. Hallelujah. So these are the times when you need to open your ear. You need to open your spiritual ear. Hallelujah. Because it's at this point that I'm beyond where I was. It's beyond where I was. That means I got to hear something else. I need to hear something else. I 
need to hear another voice. I need to hear some more direction. I, I need to hear something else. And the Bible says that when Jesus heard, come say, when he heard what the man said, that's why I said you need to invite him in your situation. Because when he's in the situation, he listens to everybody talking to you. He's listened to everything that's coming up against you. He's in the midst, hallelujah, to help you invite him in the situation. Hallelujah. He wasn't, he did not come to bring a message to Jesus. He came to bring a message to Jairus so that Jairus would leave Jesus alone and let him stay where he was. But when Jesus heard the message, that's why you need somebody on your side. You need somebody walking with you because there's some things that you're going to miss. Hallelujah, that the Holy Ghost is there. Hallelujah. Jesus, listen. The one translation said, as soon as Jesus heard it, he said, only believe. Hallelujah. Before he said that, he said, be not afraid. Shut. Because the first thing that's going to happen when it's beyond you, now, now he'd already got to the presence of Jesus. But when this news came, and when Jesus heard this news, now imagine what Jairus was feeling. If Jesus had to jump in, Imagine how it affected Jairus. Hallelujah. And he tells Jairus, first of all, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In other words, hold to what you first believed. Hallelujah. I know it's the situation doesn't change, but don't change your faith. Don't change what you believe. I know it's different and it's more difficult now, but don't change what you believe. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Only entertain thoughts that are positive. Only entertain people who are positive. Because you come too far. You already left the house. You already left a bad situation and you done got all the way over here. Only believe. Shut up. I say. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Just believe. And Jesus keeps on going. Hallelujah. Towards the house of Jairus after knowing all of the information. Hallelujah. So you got to learn how to keep on moving. You got to learn how to keep on fighting. You got to learn how to keep on persevering. When your mind is even breaking. When, when your mind and your thoughts are shifting back and forth. Hallelujah. I, I, I know y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But, but, but when your mind shifts and it lands on doubt, hallelujah, make sure it shifts back. Hallelujah. And let it land on faith. Hallelujah. While it's shifting and rocking, hallelujah, when you always come to yourself, always say, I believe. Hallelujah. After you have your little moments, Hallelujah. What if, what if, what if, what if I believe? Hallelujah. What, what we don't know how to fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to learn that as I preached the other week when Jacob, he, he, Jacob knew how to fight. He didn't give up. Hallelujah. And we got to learn how to fight and not give up on what we need to receive from God. Hallelujah. Knocking my mind over to unbelief doubt and fear hallelujah but but there's somebody else sitting up in me 
Hallelujah. Oh, anybody got the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I, my natural mind hit, hallelujah, then my spiritual mind wake up and say, only believe. Hallelujah. I'm coming. I'm coming. Just keep believing me. Hallelujah. We got to learn how to fight. Hallelujah. Be not afraid. Do not fear. Don't be distracted. That's number five. Don't be distracted because someone touches him before he touches you. That's what happened in this story. Hallelujah. Jesus was invited to Jairus' house. Into Jairus' situation. And then we had the woman with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. Just imagine. You're talking to the person that can help you. Somebody else got a problem and here they come. How did it make you feel? Hallelujah. Wait a minute. I was, I was chill first. Hallelujah. Wait your turn, lady. I asked Jesus to come lay hands on my daughter, and here you come. But don't let folk distract you because they miracle come before yours. Don't let them distract you because they're able to touch him when you need him to touch you. Y'all, are y'all getting this? Hallelujah. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Some people can touch him and be healed, but you can't touch him. You just, I need you to touch me, Jesus. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. By folks around you, trying to get your mind off of what you came for. Don't be distracted because of the news changing. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, be, don't lose focus. Hallelujah. Because something else is going on that you didn't account for. That's why you got Jesus. Because with Jesus, when he's in the midst, he changes things. Hallelujah. He changes. He changes things. Hallelujah. I, I, I feel I'm about to jump ahead of myself. Hallelujah. But, but when he's in the midst, he changes things. Hallelujah. So you got to learn how to change some things. You got to learn how to change the atmosphere in your favor. You got to learn how to put out unbelief. Hallelujah. And you got to learn how, hallelujah, to let fear not take a hold on you. Hallelujah. Because there is power in your words. Hallelujah. It's not that fear won't show up. That's not, see, we're not talking about that because he going to show up. He going to show up. The thing that we forget when fear shows up, we forget about the power that's in our mouth. We forget about there is authority in our mouth. Hallelujah. And while I'm dealing with my flesh on one side, I need to still be speaking out of my spirit on the other side. I need to speak to fear. I need to bind it. I need to cast it down. I need to command it back to the pit of hell. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Shout. Hallelujah. Sometimes I say hell, yeah. And sometimes I say the abyss or whatever, but you got to get out of here. 
Hallelujah. So we got to get, we got to start speaking with the authority and the power. And I guarantee you that when you clear up, hallelujah, when your mind and your vision is clear, everything going to be gone. You're going to be still having a problem, but you, you ain't going to be fighting. You're going to, because you took authority over that situation. Now you're changing the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Why? You got, you got to change the atmosphere to something positive. Hallelujah. You got to turn that situation around. You got to start singing. You got to start you know, praising God. Hallelujah. And I tell you, uh, sometimes it's the initial is the hardest thing to do. Hallelujah. Almost like the Hebrews, how can we sing? Hallelujah. In a strength. How can I sing? Hallelujah. When fear and all of these things are coming up against me. How can I sing? Because you got the power in you. You got the spirit of God in you. And all you got to do, all, all he's wait, waiting for you to do, you know, sometimes the Holy Ghost will just fall on you. Anybody ever had that? You didn't even ask him. You wasn't even think. All of a sudden, he just show up. And it's those times you want him when you're going through a situation and he ain't never show up. When he don't show up, that means he wants you to start it. That means that when before he, 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 he kind of do it like the Old Testament. He, when they stood in front of the Red Sea, he stretched forth it open. But the next river y'all got to cross, y'all got to initiate it. So when you don't hear him fall, when you don't feel no anointing, ain't nothing going. You can't feel the wind blowing and you full of the Holy Ghost. That means you, in your mind, in your, you got to start something. I got to start something. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's able, he's able. You got to start somewhere. God is able to, you, you got to start it. And after a while, he going to catch up with you and say, yes, I'm is. I'm is able. I will do it. Hallelujah. And he started laughing because now you got it. Shout over to God. Hallelujah. I can't, I can't run every time you start crying. Hallelujah. Y'all know how y'all train them babies, mama. You got to let them cry. Hallelujah. Stop making a fuss. Now, when, when Jesus got to the house, remember, Jairus left the house. Jairus left an atmosphere that was a fear, uh, 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 of turmoil, there was weeping, and there was wailing. The Bible, one translation said that they was already playing the funeral music. They was all, now he left that to come to Jesus. And when he came to Jesus, Jesus says, only believe, let's go. And now he's on his way back with an atmosphere. Y'all see, now he's going back. He left the house, but now he's going back with an atmosphere of belief. Now I'm walking back. I'm not the same one walking back. Hallelujah. Now when I go back, now I know what I need. I need to change the atmosphere. In other words, now when I go back, I got to not be distracted by all that's going on. Hallelujah. And so now, but, and when he left the house, he left, hallelujah, a, a daughter that was at the point of death. Hallelujah. And then one translation said that she had even died already. And now he's going back. Now, mind you, he's going back. Why? Because she dead. He already got the news. She dead. But now he's taking the atmosphere back to the house, but he thinking that she dead. But when he gets to Jesus, Jesus says, don't be afraid. And then when Jesus and Jairus and the three, hallelujah, apostles that was with Jesus, when they enter the house, Jesus began to let them know 
the real situation. Hallelujah. When Jesus walks in with the atmosphere while the girl is in the other room not breathing and while everybody is wailing, weeping, he comes in the room and he says, what are y'all doing? He says, why y'all making this bigger do? What, what's wrong with y'all? She ain't dead. I want you to understand that a situation that you got to deal with is one thing. But when you bring Jesus in, it's a whole nother situation. I shout to myself. And we got to understand that when we're in the middle of something, it's not just me handling it. I'm not in it by myself. I'm in it with Jesus because he promised me that he would never leave me. That means that he here. That means that I need to hear what he's talking about. So, so, so Jairus left a daughter that's dead. Jesus walks into the house with a daughter that's sleeping. Because it's different. Hallelujah. What Jesus see and what we see. Hallelujah. That's why you need somebody to walk with you. That's why you need the Holy Ghost to walk alongside you. Because he can open up your mind to stuff that you can't see. And even when Jesus gets to the house, hallelujah, Jesus says, look, I ain't, I, I, I know she, she's sleeping. And, 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 and y'all can't see it. Hallelujah. But now it's funny how when he said that, they all, the Bible said, laughed him to scorn. What in the world is this man? And who is he? And where did he come from? Does he not live on earth? Does he not know what happens that, that people live? And now what is he talking about? And they went to laughing him to scorn because they couldn't see. And because Jesus did not now want this atmosphere to affect mama and daddy, he said, y'all got to go. Y'all got to go. I, I love y'all. I know y'all mean well. Y'all came to support me. Y'all got to get out of here. I can't even entertain you. I, you. You can't even be in my presence. Y'all follow what I'm And sometimes our miracle is waiting on you to put somebody out. Put them 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 out. Shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's that, I guess it's tough love or whatever because you know they came to help you. You know, but they got to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even Jesus said to one of them that he called, get thee behind me. Mm -mm, not, not working with this. Hallelujah. Because what God honors is faith. And he had to put everybody out the house. That means that some folk got to get out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They got to get out of your ear. Child, I wouldn't be, uh-uh. No, you got to go. You got to go. I wouldn't be staying here. No, 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 no. You got to go. You got to go. Because I'm, I'm expecting God to change all this. I ain't leaving, going nowhere. I'm going to let him fix this. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got you to gotta get them out your ear. Hallelujah. They mean well, but they got to go. They got to go. And when Jesus put them out, he says, now she is asleep. 
to me. I need y'all to hear that. Hallelujah. The things that Jesus has ordained to happen in your life, they're not like you perceive. They're not like you perceive. In other words, it's not that you are losing. It's just sleep. My God. Hallelujah. Children acting up. Sleep. The situation ain't, you, some of y'all think it's dead. It look like it can't change. Jesus said, don't worry about them, them jokers. And joke it. <laughs> Don't worry about them. They ju it's just the situation is just sleep. And when you're going through difficulties, hallelujah, going through sickness in your body, going through many things, Jesus said, it's just sleep. It's not over. It's just sleep. Going through financial difficulty. You say, oh, honey, my bank account, it is dead, twice dead. Plucked up by the root, dead. It... And Jesus said, your bank account just sleep. <laughs> it's just, see, we see everything differently. We just, oh, we just have a fit home. Oh, it just hits my little emotions and it just, just turns me upside down. And then sometimes we feed into it and add me. That ain't even wasn't even supposed to be in the you done brought something else in. Hallelujah. But you gotta learn how to let it go. It's not like what you're looking at. You with Jesus. Shock. Oh, no, stop. So, so, so what he's trying to get us to do is that to speak positive in the middle of my situation, I got to speak positive. I got to say, this going to work. I, I just don't know how. Ah, this going to get better. I, I just, I can't see it. I just, it, it, it's not in, in view of my eyes, but, but it's going to get better. Just start talking. Hallelujah. Talk, start talking like a blind man. Hallelujah. My problem is fixed. I can't see. It's fixed. Hallelujah. It's delivered. Hallelujah. I got the victory over this. That, that's what you got to start talking. Hallelujah. And create an environment. So that the Holy Spirit can come in. Because he ain't coming in unbelief. Hallelujah. He's not come. Now he'll touch you in unbelief. Hallelujah. He'll, he'll do some things for you because why? You his child. But when he's trying to grow you up. And trying to get you to be mature. And trying to get you to be an adult. Mm -mm, you got to work this thing out. You, you got to start talking now. And you got to say, hallelujah, positive things. When Jesus got in the house, the girl ain't dead. She's not dead. She's asleep. Here, what, what do you mean? She's asleep. And, 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 and listen what he says. Now, it, it, it just makes so much sense. She's asleep. So he goes in the room and he says to the girl, Maiden, arise. Why did he say arise? Because she's asleep. That's what you do when your kid's in the room. Y'all don't use arise. Y'all say get up or get your... Uh, 
The reason you say that because they're not dead, they're, they're living. Jesus goes in the room, in the house, and he declares that she sleep. And he goes to her and say, get up. And, the, and what happened? The Bible says the girl got up. But what in the world is Jesus trying to show us? He's trying to show you that if your situation is sleep, you, all you got to do is say, get up. You ain't got to call it back. You ain't got to go, oh, Lord. Mm, see me down here struggling, Lord. No, uh -uh. I need your help, Jesus. I need you to come and see about me. Tell the situation, get up. Shackle to my hallelujah. Rise. Hallelujah. Come back. Get up. Get up. Can y'all say that with me? Get up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what you got to do because you were created in the image of your father. Hallelujah. And the same power that the Bible says that raised Jesus from the dead dwells it. Wait a minute. He, he didn't say it was coming, did he? He, he didn't say it was coming on the day of the rapture. Did he say, did he say that y'all going to get the power uh, when, when God get ready to rapture? He's gonna, and at that, no, he says that the power, that same power that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. That means that the same power that got him up, hallelujah, from the dead, if that power dwells in you, then you can speak to stuff and raise it up and cause it to arise again. Hallelujah. I want you to know that there is power and authority in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you get ready, all you got to do is follow God's protocol and God's going to bless you and he's going to give you the miracle. Hallelujah. He's going to give it to you. Hallelujah. You, you going to get some, somebody. I'm going to get it. Hallelujah. Because it belongs to me. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I'm ready for it. Uh, I don't know what y'all ready for. Anybody ready for it? Hallelujah. Anybody got things that, 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 that you got to talk to this morning? I need you. Come on. Just stand with me. I'm, I'm closing. Hallelujah. Come on and stand with me. I want y'all to pull all of that stuff that to you to the front. Hallelujah. When you got it, I want you to just begin to clap your hands. When you well, hold, 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 hold on, hold on. When you done thought about it, and if y'all thought about it, you know what you want God to do. You know what, you know what sleep. You know what, you know the things on fell asleep. Hallelujah. If you know that they have fallen asleep. Just begin to clap your hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, y'all know what it is, right? Now, I want you to begin to say, now tell it to get up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell it to get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. You got to get up. Yes. Hallelujah. Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to transform your mind this morning. That is never as bad as you, it seemed. It ain't never as bad as you seem. The only thing is that you can't see it. So you got to learn how to talk to God. And in your talking to God, ask him to open your eyes. So I can see. I need to see on the other. I need to see on the other side of this. 
And anybody got some stuff you need to see around it? Right? Am I am I around the other side? I, I, want, I need to see what it looked like on the because I don't like where it, where I am now. I don't like what's in front of me now. I need to know what is around there. Hallelujah. 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 I want to shout now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But sometimes I just need to see, I just need to see a, a pitch. Give me, give me something, God. Hallelujah. I trust you. Hallelujah. But sometimes I just need to see around the corner. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Woo! So leave here knowing that is never as bad as it seemed. I wish I could get that message to folk who commit suicide. They can't see it. How do you know? Because talk to the ones that was contemplating it. And now all of a sudden they're in a different place. I mean, that was me getting ready to but look at me now. Look at I just couldn't see. So when we come to, to lift up the name of Jesus, always praise him with your best. Because it ain't that bad. It just feels like it. It looks like it. It ain't really that bad. After a while, it's got to go. It's got to get up. I shot. Somebody need to walk in your house when you leave here and say, get up. I'm talking about see. I'm not my shot. You need to stand right in that living room and stretch your hands out and say, Arise! Shake. Nesha koto man. Ashiketo masi. Hallelujah. Y'all got to go to some places that feel like they're dead. Some folk that feel like no life, feel like no hope, and you got to say, arise. Not here to feel it, I'm here to declare it. I'm here to speak it. Hallelujah. Get up. Hallelujah. Get up. Get up. Let me just give God a praise. I'm done. Hallelujah. Somebody going to receive a miracle. Hallelujah. Somebody getting ready for a miracle. Mm, somebody getting ready for some doors that was closed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, they, they closed to you. But when you start talking with Jesus, they ain't really closed. They ain't locked. Because who I'm, who I'm with can get in it when you get ready. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The door is going to open. Can y'all tell somebody the door is going to open? Did, did, did y'all, I say it's going to open. going to open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been declared from glory. All we got to do is just walk it out. Hallelujah. Give God a praise again. Hallelujah. Tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody needs to start writing. Writing down some stuff. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. This is what I want. This is what I need. God, I need you to bless me right here. Right, right here. Right here. 
Hallelujah. Arise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing can stand against the power of the word of God. That's all I'm going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's getting ready to happen for you. Hallelujah. God bless you. praise this morning, this afternoon, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you didn't get anything else out of this first message today, you need to speak to your situation, your sleep, your sleeping situation and tell it to arise, to the rise up, healing, rise up, deliverance, rise up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to speak this thing. Hallelujah. Because it's not that which goes into the man that defiles him. But it's that which you speak out of your mouth. Death in life is in the power of the tongue. Healing's in the power of the tongue. Deliverance is in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Protocol for a miracle. We thank and praise God for the word of God today. And we thank God for all you that have joined us. Amen. For the word. And we give let's give our elder Williams a hand this morning. Now let's give the Lord a hand club hand for visiting us this day. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. For all things in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands without wrath and without doubting. Now unto him that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all that we ask, go thank to the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forevermore. Let all those that love the Lord shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Greet your neighbor, hallelujah, in Jesus' name.